Yes. Yeah. Okay, so in July, come to his studio. It's a pleasure to be in his studio. He has the most amazing paintings. Then he moves everything out of his house and fills it with, with his paintings. And, um, and his studio is a pleasure to be in. And, and you, get, you get to feel a real sense of his relationship with his friends and family and all of that. So I really enjoy right. this. Well, well, thank, thank you. you. Um, I got an email from Carol, who's here today. And she had saw some of my work and wanted, asked if I could paint a portrait of her, her brother, John, who couldn't make it today. And um, John, uh, or Carol told me that she's always had this difficult relationship with John because John is a real quiet, silent type. And uh, Carol needed someone to talk to, and he wasn't that person. So there was this little disconnect, and little did I know when she called me, and I accepted it, that this would be an emotional journey for us. And, and by us, I mean Carol and I, and not John. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so John, he, uh, you know, as I said, Carol was looking for, you know, this connection, these feelings, and these emotions, and that, and he just, he just, this just wasn't in his nature. So we went over to his house to take photos of him. I, when I, when I do portraits, I, I start with a, a photo shoot. Um, I don't do them live often because I can't get anyone to come to my house at 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we went there. He lived in Carpentry, and we went into his uh, his workshop. He's a woodcrafter, and because uh, that was where he's most comfortable. Carol and his wife had told me. So we went there to uh, take the photos of him, and I was just amazed because he is an artist in his own right. He has these giant boats that he built. He's uh, just crafted out of wood. And I was there to see the whole process of the jigs that he made and the, you know, in different stages in these beautiful lacquer finished uh, boats. And I, so I understood that, you know, John spent a lot of time alone working uh, on his crafts there. And, you know, being a, a craftsman, being an artist, being a writer, it's a, uh, it's, you know, it's a lonely occupation because you're there by yourself. And it takes a lot of deep concentration to do that over many hours. And I realized that, you know, that, that's what John did. And, and I'm like that. And uh, John um, also carried that quietness outside. So Carol felt that a portrait of him might help her uh, get back in contact with John. It might help her get through this. So, uh, so I, I, you know, painted the portrait. I, I, you know, did some sketches, showed it to her, and they approved that. Then I did that, and I told Carol it was ready. He was uh, ready to show, so she, Carol's right here. <laughs> and so uh, she, uh, I was looking up there for you, and so I. Uh, uh, she has to send a picture so John can see, which is, which is great, because she sent a picture, because the worst thing in life is to do a portrait of someone and then have them come and look at it the first time. Because you always know oh, they're going to just hate this, they're going to wonder why I'm going to They're going to want their deposit back and more. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. But, but she said that they liked it, and so they came by and took a look at it, and. Uh, and, and, and this is the result of John. And one thing that Carol told me, and I, I wrote it down, she said that uh, she hangs this in her um, in her breakfast room, and so every morning she gets to see John. And she said that the help, the painting has helped her through her karmic knot, and to help to accept him as a steady, wordless presence that that he is. <laughs> So, and, and so that made me obviously feel really good <laughs> about the painting. Um, and, and one reason I went to speak to them and talk to John, I paint people, I, you know, I need to know who they are. And I got a good sense of who John was. You know, he, we went out to lunch afterwards with his wife. And her, his wife's just the opposite of John. She can talk. And, uh, John, John, John will talk when he said and ask a question. But, uh, but he is like, quite a, so I was happy because it's, you know, when, when my goal when I paint a portrait is not just to create a likeness of someone that that's not that difficult to do, but to create who they are and, and uh, show who that you know they are in life is what what my goal is as a painter. So, so this is John. 
we'll put John here. Be quiet. <laughs> Now, uh, Helen, she is, is a local, uh, she, she lives locally. Helen is a, uh, is a uh, local, let me get the uh, her right. She, she is Ohio's living treasure, one of Ohio's living treasures. <laughs> and, and I got to know Helen, uh, you know, years ago, we were getting into her, but it's all right. But, you know, people would tell me about her. And, you know, she worked 30 years volunteering for the Ohio Tennis Tournament, and she helped kids learn tennis. And she worked with the Ohio Youth Foundation for a while, and and many years. And just it was really a kind soul. And uh, and, and and what I just said is just a, scratches the surface of what she's done and how she's helped other people. So I kind of felt that I, I wanted to paint uh, to paint Helen. Now another thing that you know it's always great fun to run into Helen because she always has a joke or has a story and none of which I can repeat. <laughs> and if you say anything to Helen that uh, might, she might take the wrong way, she's not afraid to smack me. <laughs> and, and she'll probably do that today uh, for saying that later. <laughs> but, um, but I But I wanted to, you know, I always try to keep you know, a challenge I've been painting stuff with dark backgrounds, and I wanted to paint Helen in a, in a higher key, which I did here. She was wearing a white uh, outfit, and a, you know, she has her silvery gray hair, so I painted a really high key, and I thought that, that it gives a kind of ethereal quality and a kind of match, you know, who she is and her, her personality. Uh, and so I, I named this St. Helen of Ojai. <laughs> and so that's Helen. Now, Cassidy is another, another local person who, who uh, where's Cassidy? Yeah, uh, I've always been amazed with Cassidy. Cassidy, uh, I met her, I had my paintings at the Jester long ago when the Jester was at. see this energy inside of her and you could tell that she you know had this quiet desperation and this <laughs> intentional determination to uh, you know to uh, reach goals that she set for herself in her life and uh, so you know over the years she had several jobs and, and so she's uh, but but today what, what is great about her she's opened her own dance studio she stopped all that and so she's kind of living the the, the dream that she uh, had always uh, hoped to have. And I, I just really, you know, that always moved me that she had this drive and this determination. She did that. So I wanted to paint her as a strong, kind of determined uh, woman uh, that she is. And um, so that is Cassidy. Some of you may know of her. Her uh, dance studio is called the Ojai Arts Exchange. And uh, anyone who wants to learn to dance should go see Cassidy. Uh, which is like, so I'm going to. Put Cassidy here now. Now, now Cassidy has a boyfriend, and who is a uh, who's her fiance now. And, uh, uh, move that down. Move it up here. Make sure you yeah. spoon the bottom part. <laughs> That's always easier. Now spoon it this way. It's called yeah. the Ohio Dance Exchange. Yeah. Ohio Dance Arts, Exchange. Arts Exchange. Arts Exchange. Arts Exchange. Oh, Arts Exchange. Yeah. Did I say dance? Ohio Arts Exchange. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I met <laughs> Bernie separately, and this is Bernie. And I, I used to paint Bernie. Now, Bernie, um, he's a local musician. And oh, again, this way. Yeah, just the lights were there. Oh, you go. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, for us. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Now, Bernie is a local musician, and he has a long history in the in the music uh, business. He's recorded with Grammy-winning artists, and uh, he's just a, you know I met him watching him uh, play, and uh, and so I uh, asked asked to paint paint him. He uh, he was play, he would play at the Vine, and Cassidy was working there as a server, and he apparently had a thing for Cassidy. And so the story is that he was at Home Depot and called her up one day and said, Cassidy, I'm at Home Depot, I'm gonna buy a piece of plywood. How big she do you need to tap dance? And so she told him, and he said, "Okay, you're 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 performing tonight." <laughs> and so he and she's an amazing tap dancer, and I I have this affinity. My son also has also tap dances, so I have affinity for uh, tap dancers and, and uh, tap dancing. Um, but I uh, so so this is Bernie. I uh, you know I I I did a uh, well what I did was I let me move Helen here. Mm -hmm. Oh, another thing about Bernie. So when Bernie and Cassidy came over to do the photo shoot, he, 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 my dad was awake and there, so I asked him to come and say hello to my dad. So he spoke to my dad, and uh, and they had a nice, nice chat. And then he called me the next day or a couple days later. He texted me. I forgot, but he said he, he couldn't sleep because he he's working on a new CD <coughs> and he needed someone to do a voice uh, to introduce each song. And he thought my dad would be perfect for it. Mm -hmm. And so, and my dad, he worked. He, he was a, you know, he worked in radio long ago. And so uh, I said yes, and I told my dad, and he said sure. So Bernie came over and recorded him. And Bernie's album Downward Dud came out the CD a couple months ago. And now my dad, at 97, has found a new career. <laughs> <laughs> Fondly looking up toward Ed Cassidy. Uh, and if they're mad at each other? Is they what? If they're mad at each other, they switch places. Okay, now uh, Ruben. I painted Ruben. Yeah, Ruben. This year. Yeah. Uh, Now, Ruben, uh, a lot of you know him. He's a, his family owned Los Cabrales restaurant here, and you know my family and I would go there. So I met him there. But mainly, I got to know him well because he's a saxophone player, and I would see him, and um, and uh, I, I was always kind of intrigued with the saxophone. When I was young, I wanted to play a saxophone, but as soon as I looked at one, I realized it was way too complicated. And <laughs> so, I found out the trumpet was also. But, um, but Ruben, you know, he, he just has this great story. After his uh, family closed the restaurant, he became an animal. And I mean literally. He got hired by Eric Byrne and the animals. So he tours throughout the world with them. And in fact, this weekend he's performing at the Monterey Pop Festival. And I think Eric Byrne is one of the original people who perform there, and this is their 50th anniversary, Ruben gets to go there. And Ruben is just such a nice, sweet, humble guy. He, you know, he's, a, he's just a, a great fellow. I had him come by and, to take a look at this, and, and, and one thing that, you know, when, I, when we shot Ruben, you know, he, a lot of people are a little uncomfortable, so, but I had him bring a saxophone, so we just told him to play the saxophone. So he just played for about half an hour to do that. Ever would shoot and I'd adjust the light and tell him to turn around. So we got a, a bunch of really great photos of him, and, and I, I, I chose this one because, for one reason, it was the only one that showed one hand, and uh, I didn't want to have to struggle doing two hands <laughs> and, and take the attention off Ruben's face. And another thing was, I, I you know, I always try to get a new challenge, and painting a saxophone is definitely a challenge. Um, you want to paint uh, something that, uh, it, you know, it needed to be accurate because I know Ruben would look at it and he knows a saxophone so you can't just uh, mail it in or suggest it or anything. So I did it very detailed, but the, the challenge with that is to still let, make it look uh, 
like you did it in 20 minutes, even though it maybe took 20 hours. And so uh, I did that, and I was really happy when Ruben came and he, he pointed out all the little details. He goes, oh, I'm glad you got that. Not many people have those on their sides. And he commented on the rose gold there. So, um, and so I was happy that uh, with that. And so anyway, this, this, is, this is Ruben. Um, I'm going to put Ruben over here. The famous Buddy Wiles, who's Yay! here today. Now, I met Buddy 